For five straight days in early September, rain poured over northeastern Pennsylvania. What would happen next would leave an indelible mark in the history of our area. All honesty, I thought 72 was a once in a lifetime thing. To see this happen and to be of even greater magnitude is mind blowing. I just can't believe it, it happened. While Hurricane Agnes still haunts many people who lived through the flood of 1972, the remnants of a tropical storm named Lee was about to open the history books once again. Every situation, every disaster, every possible crisis is different. And many people would find themselves in crisis, enduring a disaster of epic proportions. I've never been through anything like this. This was a first. Just when I thought I'd pretty much seen and done most everything, this was a first for me. The swollen Susquehanna River spilled its banks. Creeks and streams flowed through towns and communities. And in an instant, lives were upended. It's crazy when you sit back and you think about what happened that weekend and, and how quickly so much stuff was taken away in just a matter of moments and how there was really nothing you could do about it. My God, people's lives were turned upside down in a matter of 24 hours. Mother Nature was looking for a fight and she was heavily armed. We were just staring down the barrel of a loaded gun and it was locked and loaded. The uneasy feeling of uncertainty spread from county to county and person to person. I was on set doing my job, but I honestly felt sick to my stomach. For those in the path of the flood, one word stands out. Scary. We were living through a record-breaking event, and the sights and sounds of that rain-soaked September will live on for decades to come. None of us wanted to go to sleep because you didn't want to miss anything. You, didn't, you were witnessing history and you wanted to be a part of it. Over the next hour, we'll hear from the people on the ground as the flood waters were rising. We'll hear from reporters and anchors who'll give both their personal and professional thoughts on what we're calling Eyewitness to History, the flood of 2011. You know, they say things come in threes, and unfortunately, in, in this case, those three things, they got worse with each one. The earthquake was kind of a big nothing. Irene was certainly nothing to sneeze at, a pretty serious storm, but Lee was now the storm of all storms, a storm that beat Agnes, which, again, I never thought would happen. I was really concerned that this could be a history, a benchmark on a history of disaster where people, for the first time in a long time, might say to themselves, do I really want to live near this river? Living in Sawyersville, it had consumed me when we bought the house that 72 had roared through there and had just turned people's lives upside down. And I was thinking, I went through this in 06. This time felt a little different because it was still raining outside. I guess I was a little worried because we had already seen a fair amount of rain from the previous storm, from Hurricane Irene. And we saw some of the damage it did. It was mostly trees coming down, that sort of thing. But you knew the ground was soggy, you knew we had some rain, and you wondered how much streams, creeks, and ultimately the river would take. But I don't think in anybody's wildest imagination that they thought that what would happen actually happened. And what happened was the result of days of wet weather. Riding on the backs of an earthquake and a hurricane, the remnants of Lee would pack the most serious punch and would ultimately deliver a knockout blow to thousands of people along the mighty Susquehanna. We knew we were getting a lot of rain that week. We knew somebody was going to get an ungodly amount of rain. We just didn't know where it was going to be and how much it was going to be. I guess it all started Wednesday night. It's raining, it's raining, and um, it, it just wouldn't stop raining. It would, you'd get a little break for an hour or two and then you'd get more rain. So you have all of this rain, you have the flash flooding, reports of uh, streams and creeks coming out of their banks. Uh, you've got uh, people talking about flooded roads. So then you wake up Thursday morning and you turn on the television and you hear the counties thinking and deciding on an evacuation. So um, here we go, a mandatory evacuation is imminent. Looking back on it, four o'clock was entirely too late. Probably everybody should have been out of the valley by 11 a.m., maybe noon at the latest. And we had seen some pictures of some water rescues in West Pittston at, at 10 in the morning. Some of those places were underwater. So just how fast the whole thing unfolded 
was crazy. When it was all said and done, more than 100,000 people along the river would be forced to evacuate. National Guard troops set up shop in Wilkesbury, while neighborhood after neighborhood left their homes not knowing what was next. Officials mentioned Hurricane Agnes by name. They said the flooding would most likely mirror that fateful event back in 1972. For many people, that struck a chord. What was a neighborhood thing quickly became a west side thing. And we got to the Cross Valley, that quickly became an area thing. And when we got to 81, it seemed like, you know, the entire northeastern Pennsylvania community was in this together. Rain just pounded Bradford County, Susquehanna County, and the Binghamton area, someplace at a foot of rain on Wednesday alone. All that water's coming here. We knew it, we just didn't know, A, how fast it was going to get here, and B, how high it was going to get. You're looking at Waverly and Sayre, Conklin in New York. It's already flooding. Uh, people's homes are underwater. You start hearing that kind of stuff upstream, and you start to think, what the hell is going to happen down here? All eyes were on the river in Wilkesbury. Within days, the Susquehanna morphed into a watery monster seemingly growing by the hour becoming frighteningly unrecognizable to even the most familiar locals. You know, I've been in that spot when the river was normal level many times before, but I almost couldn't remember what it looked like because that water was so high. I mean, it was covering the Market Street Bridge, a bridge I drive every day. The questions remain, will the levees hold? Will the flood walls do their job? Are we on the brink of an epic disaster? This is one big mean river and, you know, we're gonna do our best to contain it in between these walls, but Mother Nature doesn't care about a wall. That river's gonna go as high as it wants to go. We knew the levees were going to break in 1972, and they did. We didn't know if that was going to happen. There was so much uncertainty. Ever since I started working here in Wilkesbury, people it almost seems like on a weekly basis, people mention the flood of 72. That's the one, that's the benchmark that everyone always talked about. And not being from this area, I, and not being around in 1972, I, I didn't understand the weight of that, but now I do. Historically, river forecasts are always high initially. So when they first came out with a crest of 38 feet, you're a bit skeptical. Um, they usually come in a little bit lower than that, sometimes a good four to six feet lower. So an initial forecast of 38 feet, you're thinking, all right, if it gets to 34, 35, we're still in good shape, it's still high. This went to 38, and then the forecast was for just shy of 41 feet. You just never think that something like that is going to happen. We see the projections that, that started out at 30 feet and then they jumped to 38 and then 42. It's very hard to break a record when it comes to science. I got one person said it's a big number. Somebody else said it's really big. Someone else said we could beat Agnes, you know, that, and that's always been the benchmark flood here. And personally, I never a record that I thought was touchable. I never thought that that river would ever reach 41 feet again and go figure it went more than a foot and a half higher than that. With mandatory evacuations in place, emergency officials waited for the river to crest. Wilkesbury became ground zero. Everyone felt the intensity of the situation and hoped for the best. That night when we were standing outside along the river with the National Guard and Wilkesbury police and the Luzerne County detectives, uh, it was extremely surreal because we were at the, we were on the scene of whatever was going to happen. It was going to happen right there. 